It's called, I, just, I call it the summertime. Tours. Closing my eyes is the closest I can get to time travel, alone in the dim with lids closed and memories open. Come what nightmares the world may muster, I'll still daydream. It's harder in the summer, though, when the wind in my AC unit does little to diminish a hot city night's frenzy, until my eyes dilate and I'd rather die early. Still, I do my best musing in the morning, when my head hasn't yet had time to curdle in the sun. Over oatmeal, I check old pictures and playlists like Hunter's Snares to see if they've caught any new feelings. Fleeing that holiday hideaway to avoid an overdose of solitude, I go out for a cold brew with a bold crew of colleagues, put on liquid extroversion and ready to change the game. Or so would it be until, standing in the ruins of myself, or, eh, just a checkout line, I realize I'm simply a sequence of reactions midway to completion. The future is a complicated consequence of now, and in the meantime, I'm a moment, confluence. One of those illusions of a hundred disparate bricks, branches, whatever, which only cinch into coherence if caught from the right angle. With daily living about little more than maintenance, then, I try to remind myself, keep your finger on the people's pulse, but don't lose your own heartbeat. Wise words to a level head, yet at this Fahrenheit, I look at a half-crushed Gatorade and realize I am imbibing a chemical cocktail and can't pronounce the contents. So I can take time to put aside my client's cat and computer to research each ingredient, how they're produced, and if it's ethical, or just shrug and chug. Flags above popped and snapped in the spotlight like firecrackers. The only thing thicker than the smoke was the crowd. The smell of Red Bull on the breeze. I wouldn't have a problem letting go of the past, but yesteryears like those were always here. Pattern plastered over every calendar and all I own with all they invoke like ash in a jacket. Not all of us are self-affirming artists. Some of me connect the dots for clarity. All I want is the frame of reference I mean because I'm of three minds. The one that works, the one that dreams, and the one that actually thinks. And the last breaks down the first two. Productivity hacks help. Nothing gets shit done like planning the afternoon with a mental Edgar Wright montage. And if you ever feel down, wear sunglasses. When you take them off, the sky will seem that much brighter. Philosophy is an option too. Balance doesn't always mean the middle, it depends how heavy each side is. Everything I do pursues that happy media, and hey, it's gotten me this far. So I take pride in the fact there's little I take pride in, all while I try to see myself as an entertainer first and a person second. Half the fun is wondering what I'll look back on as so nostalgic about all of this. Parties, or going friend fishing. I stopped and I realized I didn't take pictures because I couldn't tell them care to share them. Writing. My vice is eloquence and I'm penning a self-help book whether I mean to or not. Filmmaking. I can't act, but I'm quite comfortable making loud noises in crowded rooms even when there's no audience, just me and my reputation. No, I'm done with attention. I need intention. Luck and first impressions only get you so far, and all this posh posturing and performing is like never exhaling. As it stands, any question I'm asked is about three more away from me openly questioning my entire existence. Sunburn status. Richard drives in close encounters. Better to be distracted looking up than down, even if I'm liable to go blind if no cloud cover. My religion is legend, but my profession, passion, and pastimes all involve sitting at a screen. Don't tell me how this ends, then. Help me write it. Stories are the dominant species on Earth, and sanity is as much a privilege as ignorance, so if I can't free my spirit, then maybe I'll go for broke with my body. Just snap one week and start walking to Mount Rainier. Insoles and outlaws be damned, and travel until I unravel. Which is to say I'm just a nomad with expensive tastes, and there's comfort in chaos, and the chance of dissatisfaction, containing action, which so many people want to believe talk is, because otherwise they do nothing. Everything is in between. Everything can be explained, but little can be understood. Normality is a disease most eventually contract, but I guess I must wear an N95 more than I thought, because my brain has massive total inconsistencies, prioritization dyslexia, and ideas like microwave meals. Cheap, salty, and to be cool before serving. I'll always try to make a living. I just fear what that living will try to make of me. We're only truly divided into people who believe in something and people who don't, and within the former thrive the planeswalkers. Those who can think digital but live analog, trash the motivational junk food of Greco Roman quotes and Hans Zimmer highlights, and actually make it happen. To everyone else, being heard is more important than being right, so I'd rather be a big fish in a small pond than one out of water. Recognition is currency, one I don't seek but love to find. And while this stream of consciousness flows, let me just spray that worry is a liquid. If you don't chill, it'll fill every corner of your headspace like a pollock, forward, explosive, the feeling with no memory. I'd go online to simmer down, but same cage, different bars. We thought the internet would show us the truth, but it just gave us more places to hide from it. Sometimes the idea of a horizon is better than heading towards it. Sometimes seeing the forest for the trees requires a controlled burn. What's the point of being sentient if you can only do what's expected of you? Every moment is an education, and I pray that I never become so successful that I forgot what it took to get where I am. But it's hard, you know? Discipline is so quiet. Left to my own devices and their apps, I feel silent, formless, yet like a bottle so full it can't make a sound when blown across. And the Fermi Paradox applies to identity. 
Either this is the best I can do, or it's not. Both prospects are equally terrifying. I actually don't mind when people forget me, because what's better than a second chance at a first impression? After all, friendship's like flowers to which you must tend. I can't just stew in my own oddness, especially when the only thing that I ever let go to my head was a cold. It gets hotter every year, so I think I gotta follow suit. I'm running out of some days. I want to leave a legacy, not really cause to call a U-Haul. I've got to look less and read more, find the nearest reflective surface like a stovetop coil to the touch, and tell myself the most powerful force is indifference, and faith is taking on a loan of closure with no guarantee, so don't let the infinity outside crush the infinity to them. Give your future self a reason to trust you and start by making hope the goal, not happiness. We all reach the point where we outgrow our heroes, where people don't sing about being our age, and yet your ancestors would give anything to be as new as you. You're always too late for something, but just on schedule for something else. Either life will get better or you will. Like it or not, there's still time.